Hertz helps Tesla rise $100 a share is our story for today. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Thanks once again for joining us. If this is your first time, welcome. If you're a repeat visitor, welcome back. We also want to thank our Patreon supporters. If you enjoy our show and like better ideas on investing and trading, please join us. We also wanted to uh, note that um, please take time to like and subscribe if you would. And this is a copyrighted broadcast. So today, Hertz stock price actually, or Tesla stock price dropped dramatically on a $4 billion, 100,000 vehicle order from Hertz. Now, this is a really interesting situation because Tesla was actually scheduled to actually rise nicely in the range of 50 to 100 points over the next week or two based on strong uh, the, the strong earnings report that was presented. We want to note here that the, um, the folks on the uh, hedge fund side of things thought that, you know, the news was same old, same old relative to um, the production numbers that we saw early in the month. But this really illustrates the difference between the outlook of large money managers and the hedge fund industry in terms of the hedge fund industry wrap it up or down immediately, the um, bond and large investment community having a different profile and what they want to see from a company. And therefore, Tesla stock was up already nicely. And now we have this extra uh, 100 points. Now, I have to say that it really this really feels like a short squeeze to me. As we know, 11% of the shares of Tesla were actually shorted as of two weeks ago. So I believe what we see going on right now is that the people who saw the amount of shorts that were out there, how exposed they were, were using this opportunity to not only allow the stock price to rise with the strong move that came with the announcement, but they're using this as an opportunity to even force Tesla's stock price higher, creating a very painful situation for those funds that were still short who now have to cover at some nosebleed level prices. And so I do believe it, it may push forward uh, up in the short term, but I do see a pullback here only because once those shorts have covered, um, the upward pressure on the stock immediately will actually abate slightly. So we'll see how this plays out, but congratulations to all of you that are making a ton of cash right now. Uh, this is your great opportunity to uh, to wallow in huge amounts of, of Tesla profitability. You know, if I break down the purchase of 100,000 vehicles that Hertz has announced, I, I have to tell you that it's confusing. And here's why. Right now, uh, the backlog for most of Tesla's vehicles is at least three months, if not almost a year or eight months when it comes to things like the Model X Plaid is back into next summer in backlog. There are a large number of new vehicles that have backlogged. And we're told by some of our viewers in places like England that used vehicles are selling almost new vehicle prices because of that backlog. So the problem that, or the question that emerges from all of this is, okay, let's see, there are 600,000, they aren't gonna produce them next year, but there's a backlog of 600,000 at least, if not 1.5 million uh, cyber trucks that's supposed to start delivery of next, in the, into next year. There's obviously the semi trucks that are supposed to start delivery next year, might even be pushed back another year. There's um, a backlog of the top of the line vehicles that we've already just discussed. And, you know, there, if, you saw the videos we've shown you uh, of the local production facilities, there's no inventory sitting out there. And then we add to that the fact that for some reason, I think it's that they're short on chips. It doesn't look like the new factories are gonna open until into the new year. And I do believe it's a chip shortage that's causing this. So when you stack all these things up, the fact that we have this big order from Hertz is terrific. The problem is that there's a whole bunch of people that are ahead of them in the list. 
So when this order was put in, it was put in with a 14 month delivery time frame that will be had. We're also going to see, in theory, Hertz is sort of the biggest player out there. They own multiple uh, car companies. But because they've made this commitment to Tesla, we can definitely expect at least another 20 to 50,000 vehicles being purchased by competing firms who have to stay, com stay competitive with what they're doing. So let's call this whole thing 150,000 vehicles over the next two years. Well, that is a big number, but right now Tesla's at a million vehicles a year. And by next year, we're expecting them to be between 1.5 and, and possibly even 2 million vehicles by next year, but definitely a 1.5 is in order. So let's say 10% of those vehicles are gonna go to the rental car fleets over the next, let's say two years. Well, this is in line with the regular growth rate that Tesla has been experiencing. And I think it's terrific that the order's in, but the challenge is that they don't have any cars to give them now. And I think it'll be six months before any of these cars will get to Hertz. And it's my belief that this order sort of blends in with all the other orders Tesla's getting and will just be part of the backlog. So I do think that, you know, the large institutional investors will be thrilled to see orders like this happening and more of them likely to come. But I have to say that it, uh, it definitely feels very, very strange. Um, the one other thing that I would say that lurks out there is that um, Roger Penske, Hertz, those guys are really heavily involved in leasing activities. And you'll notice that with Nissan Leafs and all these others, there are actually a lot of fleet uh, buyers that are going through the leasing companies to get the cars that are standard for to be used by their companies. So for example, if you ever see like an AT&T truck drive by or Verizon, all these different companies, um, that vehicle isn't owned by those companies, but the signage on the side, they're actually leased by giant companies like Penske on behalf of those companies. And so they just, it's just a leasing expense. So uh, in this case, it was articulated that it's a $4.2 billion deal, but the actual mechanism for how this works may not be obvious. For example, Hertz could be purchasing on behalf of several large fleets that want those vehicles in is one of the ways that I think this is probably gonna go down because um, I could definitely see Hertz adding it to its fleet domestically and perhaps globally, but I would only expect that there'll be a few uh, Teslas per location. So in theory, let's say there are a thousand locations and we have five Teslas per 5,000 vehicles, not 100,000 vehicles. Um, so, and then the other issue that comes up is um, when we bake it down, what's the per day vehicle sort of rental price? So if Tesla is renting uh, for call, you know, we're not in that zone now, but let's say we're in a regular rental zone after prior to COVID, if you will, a Tesla type vehicle, the price point of rental for a $50,000 vehicle is likely someplace $150 a day for that. And that doesn't really hit the sweet spot of where most consumers would be spending their money. So hence why we feel like this is probably a corporate situation as well. So uh, I wanna say congratulations on what's happened here. Um, I think the stock price will get beyond this without a doubt. And it should have gotten beyond this in the next couple of weeks into the next month. Um, but it's great to have it here now. I really, in my gut, am thinking that this was an opportunity for the hedge funds to punish those who had shorted Tesla and finally get rid of all the shorts once and for all that were at that 11% shorted position. Um, one of the other things I'm wondering about is will those guys choose to close their positions now or hopefully delay the stock price pull back down and then they would uh, get out uh, versus getting out now. As you know, whenever you deal with um, shorts, uh, they, have, uh, they have certain things called covenants. So if they lose a certain amount of money, they immediately have to cover, meaning spend money to buy the stock in order to cover their positions. And so this is why we see the price 
will bounce up and then keep going. So we kind of ended up at 975 today, and now we're over 1,000 heading for 1,010 is sort of consistent with the process. So the next question is, will it pull back and let those guys get out at a cheaper price or stay above 1,000? I actually think that it has a good chance to stay above 1,000 because there are a lot of institutions that love Tesla's fundamentals currently and are looking for an opportunity to get in. And the crash of the Hertz purchase and the hedge funds battling each other has forced prices up so that people who have to get in will start buying you know, in large amounts. Even if they don't buy it immediately, they'll do so over the next two to three weeks in what's called a dollar cost averaging process. So, uh, you know, I, this wasn't designed to be a huge conversation today. We're looking forward to your comments. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Tschüss, Germany, German, au revoir. Uh, French, le hitro, choda, hafez, strazice, Russian, nihama, Chinese, kombawa, Japanese. And we look forward to your comments and inputs here, but congratulations to all of you who've made a ton of money here on Tesla. And we look forward to more action of this sort. Have a great day and bye for now.